She's such a geek. Yes, they're talking about me and about you and about most of the people likely to be hearing this essay. For the men who are saying to themselves, uh, you can't mean me. Yes, I do. Ignore the S in front of he like the rest of us have ignored its absence our entire lives. For the non-geeks, just change the word geek to one of your choice. I'm sure a good substitute is at hand. As geeks and women, the authors of the essay and I have put ourselves into a world that still expects every geek to be a white man, with taped glasses, with pens in his pocket, even though he does all his work on a computer. He has incurably bad taste in clothes. Just watch Weird Al's video, White and Nerdy. It captures the perfect nerd stereotype. It's based on a song called Writing Dirty by Chameleon Air, a song about racial profiling of black men. It worked for Weird Al. The same rap song would not work for Laurie Anderson. It wouldn't work for Chameleon Air either. Nerds and geeks are white men, except those of us who aren't. So what do non-white, non-men nerds do? Do we follow our inner geek nature? Do we succumb to cultural pressures and act like non-geeks? For me, there was never really any choice. I'm a scientist and a geek. I happen to be a woman, but that's not particularly relevant. My desire to understand how things work is who I am. Happily, I admit I do not look like the average geek, and I don't want to. So here's a little bit of my story. It starts like most. I'm a girl. I like taking things apart and putting them back together. I play with computers. I love physics and math. I do girly things. I do non-girly things. I did have an unconventional education. I went to a school with six grades and one teacher for several years, followed by moving half a dozen times and ending up in a school on an Indian reservation. The high school had a graduation rate of about 35%, with most students dropping out or moving. The school did have Commodore 64s, and I started programming. After graduating from a different high school, because we moved, I went to Caltech. Suddenly, life changed. I was in a pond of geeks. A pond with a severe ecological imbalance, though. 13% of us undergraduates were labeled first and foremost female. Not budding scientists or engineers, not even women students, just female. Each of us chose one of three reasonable options. Uh, disappear, either by sticking around and hiding or leaving altogether. Find a boyfriend and act like one of the guys, or stick with female in flashing letters and enjoy the attention. My boyfriend is now my husband 20 years later. The rumor in the late 80s was that no woman undergraduate who had graduated from Caltech had ever married a man who was not also a graduate. That rumor sort of gave those poor boys a little hope. So I, I worked hard at Caltech and rose to various academic challenges. I loved the freedom of academic life and the rigors of scientific research, and I headed down the academic career path. It was graduate school for me. When looking at graduate schools, I took my dad's advice and chose to go based on the person I would work with. As soon as I met my future advisor, I knew I wanted to work with him at MIT, a lake of geeks. But John, my advisor, approached interesting scientific problems in a way that I feel still find inspiring and I don't regret going. I did have one more quarter at Caltech, and that was when I first realized there were essentially no women faculty. Somehow I'd missed this observation, even though the only two classes I'd taken from women for literature classes. There were very few women faculty at Caltech overall, and almost none in the sciences. In fact, it was the best joke at the department party that year. The top 10 things you're least likely to hear from your advisor. Number one, we need more women faculty. Somehow, without even knowing any female science professors, I just assumed that I would become one. There were more women at MIT, including some faculty, but there weren't many. I attended a women's graduate student forum a couple of times, but disliked the negative focus on problems. I wanted to talk science with women rather than discuss topics like different demands and expectations for women graduate students versus men. For me, the best way to deal with these issues was to concentrate on my work. My situation was much better than most, having chosen a, I had an advisor that I liked and, liked and respected, and my research was mine. I had both the responsibility and the risks of the research. Also, my expectations 
and achievements were largely based on my own standards rather than on external approval. I like external approval. I like being seen as successful. I like getting papers published. But I'm a scientist to develop my own understanding and not for these external goals. Being so self-contained isolated me from a lot of issues women fight against for acceptance in scientific and technological fields. It also meant doing much of my work alone. It's only now that I'm beginning to collaborate with more than a few people. After six years of graduate school, it was time to find a job. I wanted a faculty job at a research institution, and so I refused to apply for teaching jobs, and was too green for a faculty position at a major university. So I returned to Caltech as a postdoc. It was a difficult time, but I was saved from complete frustration by an interview followed by a job offer from the University of California at Davis. I happily accepted that offer. UC Davis Geology is not your average science department. When I accepted the job, the department already had more diversity than any other department I was aware of. There were two women, a blind man, an African-American emeritus professor. My addition made an unheard of three women faculty members. Within a year, we hired a fourth woman, one with some Hispanic heritage. I found a place where stereotypes did not dominate the workplace. Even many of the old white men refused to accept the science professor stereotypes. It was, and still is, a place to work hard, feel comfortable with one's colleagues. In the years I've been at UC Davis, our hires have included more women, a few men of Asian descent, and several white men. By being open-minded and embracing diversity, my local community has evolved a critical mass of people who look and act differently than exterior stereotypes demand. For the first time, I have a significant number of good women friends who are as geeky as I am. I hear their voices in the hall talking about their newest scientific insights and the thrill of an article accepted in science. My local environment is closer to the way scientific community should be than any other I've seen. We have not yet approached the diversity in culture and ethnicity that's essential for future scientific vitality, and true gender equality is still a dream. But I am tasting what geekdom can be like when the doors are open to all. It's an exciting world, so let's make it a reality. And thanks for watching.